tomorrow's 44 Soyuz relocation by Commander Padalka, Kornienko, and Kelly will be the first such relocation of a Soyuz outside the International Space Station since November 1st of 2013 when the Expedition 37 crew uh, managed to do that. They, re they relocated their Soyuz from the Razvit module to the Zvezda. Um, and that crew, Commander Fyodor Yurchikin and NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg and, um, and Luca Parmentano, ESA astronaut. And you did this almost two years ago now. So what do you remember from this relocation? Well, I remember everything because it's, um, it's, a, very interesting, um, it's a very interesting operation for which we train a lot. It's, um, it's done manually which means that for the first time, uh, in, in, in my case, in our, in our expedition, the commander and myself took manual control of the spacecraft in order to detach it from the space station or undock, and then fly it around manually again and do a manual docking. And it's, um, it is intense because, just like in a sci-fi movie, you are, um, you are flying around a big space station, which is actually flying already at uh, 28,000 kilometers an hour or 70,500 miles an hour, and then you are flying around it to go from one dock, docking port to another. So it, it, is, it is interesting. It, it's quick in a way uh, compared to other operations, but, um, but very intense. So you say it's quick. What does this day look like for the crew that's going into the Soyuz from start to finish, from the time you get in to the time you are docked and back in the International Space Station? What is that day like? So strangely enough, the longest part of, uh, of the operations is making sure that everything, that everything that you open and close is going to be completely sealed. You don't want any surprise leaks uh, once you unlock the, the, the spacecraft, both on the, on the station side. You don't want to lose atmosphere from on the space station and on the on the spacecraft side, so we do we do what the, what, is, what what are called leak checks, making sure that everything is perfectly sealed, and then you also have to be ready to come back to Earth because once the spacecraft is is out, if something goes wrong, then the crew is coming down. So you have to consider that day as if it was. Um, you know, if as if you're not coming back to the space station and you may end up coming down to Earth. So all this preparation takes takes time um, in excess of an hour. Um, then after you undock, the actual fly around is probably only uh, between 15 and 20 minutes. It depends on on the commander's technique uh, or the pilot's technique really. And uh, and then the docking phase is another um, another five minutes or so. Once you're docked, everything goes back to the same operations that you do on the on the very first time you dock. Uh, so and that more leak checks, making sure that now uh, you haven't damaged the docking port, that everything is perfectly sealed between the spacecraft, the Soyuz, and the space station, and then you can open the, the door again. So all in all, we are talking about um, a four-hour procedure when you consider the the normal delays and, and all the normal checks that you have to do. And just 20 minutes of flight time, so four hours and only 20 minutes, you're actually outside the uh, space station. But what is that like for you? Obviously, leaving, I don't know if we, I want to say the comforts of the space station, but you've been there now for a, a few months at this point. So what was it like pulling away and thinking, I might not be going back there if something goes wrong? So for me, it happened only about 10 days before coming back to Earth. So... Um, that the thought of uh, having to leave in emergency was was not daunting because uh, you know we we were towards the end of our of our mission we had completed all everything that we were going to do but at the same time of course you want you know you want to come back you want to continue helping with with your with your crew and um, so you you just you want to you want to go back uh, i can guarantee you that uh, Certainly, we are not going to any emergency, any any situation that is anomalous. We are going to take it very seriously, but at the same time, we are going to make sure that we do everything we can to go back to the space station. So it is the space station at the time is your home. It's uh, it's your it's your comfort. You have your crew quarters, uh, which is your room with your things, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that they come back with you at one point or another. So certainly, um, you're uh, you're focused on coming back to the space station. So once you leave, do you get a good view of the outside of the space station? Do you get to see kind of different parts that you don't normally get to see? Absolutely. Um, 
when you when you when you come in for the first time when you're docking, you're so you're focused on on the automatic operations, and so your attention is really focused on the cameras and the, uh, the screens that you have on the cockpit. Um, that you really don't have a lot of time to to look outside and uh, and see what's happening. And you you come in straight for your docking port, so you don't do a fly around of the space station. You see. Um, the, the, the the structure and you see w the direction that you're going that you're coming in and, and you go straight for your docking port now for the first time uh, once once the initial set uh, course is done you have a chance to look outside you're going to be looking even through the cameras at different parts of the space station uh, and you know it's 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 amazing how similar how accurate it is with the simulations that we do on the ground so talk a little bit about why why did why was it important for you to move the Soyuz, and why was it important for this crew tomorrow to move the Soyuz? It is extremely important for uh, uh, at, at least two reasons that I can think of. The first reason is that in order to dock to the space station, you have to move the whole space station in a, in a position that will allow the docking for the Soyuz. Now, the Soyuz is actually obviously smaller, uh, it has less fuel. The space station, though, is much bigger. You want to preserve that fuel. So it, it's um, it's energy and momentum uh, management, and also resource resource management. So you want to put both the station and the and the Soyuz that's coming in the best possible configuration to make the docking expeditious. So since um, the mission. Uh, Iris is coming up with uh, my colleague uh, Andres Mogens and his, and his two crew members. They want to make that condition for docking the easiest possible, both for the station and uh, and and um, Soyuz. And and so they're going to free up a port that will that will make the docking conditions simpler. For them, that for them on the space station, doing the fly around is already. Is, is a simple operation, relatively simple operation, because now the space station doesn't need to move. Which that's the space station keeps flying in its uh, in its orientation uh, without any any loss of energy or resources. And then you just use a very tiny bit of resources to move the the capsule from one docking port to the other. And when I say a tiny bit of resources, we are trained to do a docking using less than 10 kilograms of fuel. Oh, wow. Well, Luca, thank you so much for uh, joining us to talk about the re relocation of the Soyuz. Uh, once again, this was Luca Parmitano, an ESA astronaut who was on the last relocation mem uh, mission back in November of 2013. Thank you, Luca. Thank you very much.